Welcome to this new video. In this video I want to talk about the Xperia 10 Mark II and Selfish OS and which advantages Selfish OS brings to the Xperia device. So let's get started. So here we have Selfish OS running on the Xperia 10 Mark II and the first advantage I was want to talk about is the user interface of Selfish OS. You can see that we have a very tall device that is not easy to reach, especially on the top. But Selfish OS has a very good optimized one-handed user interface. So what we can do is just swipe down to go to our quick toggles like Bluetooth, flight mode or whatever I want to. It's a bit harder to reach the themes and the a lock button but of course you can always use the power button to lock the device which is also very handy. Then we have also the possibility to just swipe up to get to all of our applications and when I just open an application just for example I open the notes application and I want to write a note and I can just write a note here if I want to save it or create a new note or share it or delete it or change the color of the note I don't have to go to the top here, I can just swipe down to get to the f uh, various different options, which is very handy and shows how powerful Selfish OS can be with the one-handed usage. I can also just swipe to peek if there's another application uh, acquiring, requiring my attention and swipe back. Or I can just swipe from below here to open up a new application, just for example, like Storeman. And then we come to applications, which is pretty interesting. Because usually if you have an Android phone, you need just some kind of um, yeah, login credentials to log in to be able to use the Play Store, for example. Of course, on the Selfish OS, you have the Yola Store and you need a Yola account as well. But you can download and install this open repos, Storeman application, which does not require any account for downloading applications. And you find some nice applications, just like, for example, FB Reader which is a nice uh, reader application that allows you to read ebooks and uh, some other applications that you can find here. M almost all of those applications are open source or free software applications that are not coming with any sort of spyware or advertisements. So you can see nice little preview windows if they're loading that show you what the application is about, how it will look like. They have a consistent user interface. It's not like it looks completely out of the place here. And those native applications also most of the time, like I said, without advertisements and without the main purpose of earning money behind it. So pretty awesome already. Of course, Selfish OS has also some advantages when it comes to free and open source movements, when it comes to uh, connecting to free and open source services. If you go to accounts, you can see if I want to add an account, I get the usual Facebook, Google, Twitter and Yahoo shenanigans that are not so privacy friendly, I would say. But I also have the possibility to just connect to my next cloud and bind in, connect, interact, integrate my next cloud into the operating system, including calendars, contacts, and the ability to upload backups or photos to my next cloud. So pretty awesome and something that Android in this case is missing. You can see that the whole user interface is very fluid, runs fluid without any status and issues on the Xperia 10 Mark II. And we also have one another good advantage. You saw all those services that I don't like so much. But there are some Android applications that are essential for some people, like WhatsApp, for example, to keep in touch with family and friends. You have the possibility to run them as well, because Selfish OS has an Android compatibility layer. I like to use F-Droid applications, which is also a free and open source software store for Android, where you don't need to log in and you have the ability to just download applications just like for example this application i don't know what it is electronic flight information system i can just download and run it because selfish OS has a compatibility layer for android applications that run just fine of course google mobile services are not installed by default so all applications or games that require those will not run if you don't tweak it because then we come to another advantages advantage of selfish OS 
the ability to tweak stuff. You can tweak almost everything out of the system because this system is a Linux based, a GNU slash Linux based system, just the same as an Ubuntu Linux and Debian Linux, Fedora, OpenSUSE Linux. You have the ability to tweak and tune whatever you want. You can change the user interface. There are patches available because most of the code of the user interface is really open in the open not all of them open source or free software but at least you can see the code and you can change the code to your liking and there are lots and lots of patches already available here if you just search uh, not go to settings but just search for patches here or patch you will find so many patches uh, under the open repos or storeman store that allow you to do several different things like uh, changing the status bar hint a launcher combined patch uh, and some other patches that you can find here that allow you to change the user interface and how the system interacts and works for you which is i think also pretty essential so you can go in here if you're a linux nerd you can even go to the terminal you don't need to use the terminal if you don't like to use it on this crumbled little screen what you can do of course as well is uh, go to your settings and then you can go to your developer options and what you have there developer tools is the ability to remotely connect to your device via ssh so you don't need anything extra to be installed just go to the developer tools the developer tools will install and then you have the ability to ssh into your device so you can have the command line interface of your phone running from your laptop linux laptop or mac os laptop or whatever you have and the cool thing under developer tools is you have the ability to create a password and with this password you are the super user you are root you have root out of the box here without any hacking tweaking or jailbreaking anything because this is a full-fledged linux distro for your phone so you have the power of linux in your pocket you can use this as a server if you want to you can use this uh, as a gaming station you can use this even if you want it as a usb pen drive or something like this you can do whatever you want with your phone because it's your computing device and it gives you the power that you need applications like i said android applications are supported and some of the applications have also very nice user interfaces very consistent and of course what you have here is the ability also and this is i think pretty interesting for some people is the ability to uh, play music via two speakers those of you who know the xperia 10 mark ii know that under android you only have this mono speaker at the bottom you can maybe see this little slit here where it is firing in the front but everyone wishes even for the 10 mark III, which is just was released and came out that they also use the earpiece as speaker but they didn't guess what another advantage of selfish OS, because you have the ability to tweak the system and in this case yola tweaked the speaker system already to have a dual speaker so not only the mono speaker at the bottom but also the speaker at the top will be playing a music uh, when you're listening to music if the youtube results would load now so here we have now music playing make it a bit louder and uh, let me take my microphone off so you might hear it better so we have now music playing from down here i can close it up and then you might hear music is playing from the earpiece still and if you're now here listening to this you get a nice stereo sound which is just just cool and i really really like this a possibility something that people really wished for and savage enables it under the xperia 10 mark ii then another thing that you as xperia 10 mark ii users sometimes probably will do as well as vlogging nowadays people are not only taking selfies but also vlog a lot the cool thing about this is that under Android with the Xperia 10 Mark II you don't get an option to record your audio externally like I'm recording it right now with my uh, wireless microphone but under Safish OS you can use the normal default camera software that comes with it it doesn't have many features in that regard you can change the ISO 
and uh, have a self timer and some grid views but this is basically everything and in video mode even less but what it supports in video mode is external audio so just plug and play via the headphone jack you can plug in a microphone and it will just simply work also pretty handy i would say so these are some of the advantages of uh, Safish S running on the Xperia 10 Mark II and what advantages do you get when you run uh, Xperia uh, 10 Mark II with Safish S. But there are of course some limits. The camera that I told you for example has not the best optimized or any kind of um, computational photography. It's just taking a shot like it is. So if I take a shot here of those little fruits here let me take a shot it takes it very quickly there's no post processing of any kind it's just it shows you how it is so there's no optimization of any kind this might be your preferred way of taking photos because you don't like boosted colors or over sharpening but it also has some disadvantages just like for example you cannot shoot against the sun because there's no hdr so keep in mind that. Then of course software is a bit limited. We have certainly not so much software as Android and especially the Android Play Store. But if you have only a particular workflow, a particular app that you need, it will run. What will not run are, for example, applications that you need for banking software, special 10 software list generators, or special ways of NFC payment or something like this. This will not run on Safish S, so keep that in mind. Safish S is a bit limited when it comes to this. Also, when it comes to Android applications, there are, of course, some limits. Like I said, Google mobile services are not running under Safish S on the Xperia 10 Mark II or uh, um, anywhere else if you don't use some extra tweaking and tuning and build them in, which is also possible but a bit more complicated. And of course, there are some limits also to the Android uh, side of software when it comes to connecting to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth devices. They are only pass through, so they are not allowed to change the Wi-Fi network or change the Bluetooth device. They can only uh, access what Selfish OS offers and what Selfish OS can connect to. So if you have a fancy camera that where you want to have a remote camera view, you cannot use it under Selfish OS. So keep that in mind. But if you want a device that's mainly fo focused on privacy, you have an encryption here enabled, you have the possibility to encrypt emails if you want to, you have the possibility to connect to your next cloud, not sharing your contacts and calendar entries with Google, with Yahoo or with Apple. You have the ability to run Android applications. You have the ability to install applications without any extra accounts enabled uh, that might track you. And of course, you have the full potential of Linux, of Linux computer, Linux PC here with remote access, with the ability to run certain applications, even as flat packs on your device, if you like to. This is a very powerful device and you can use this power with SafeJS in a bit of slightly different way than with Android. What do you think about SafeJS running on the Xperia 10 Mark II? If you have a device, you tried it out, just write it down in the comment section. If you're interested, what are your concerns eventually? Or what things do you really need also running under SafeJS for making this your daily driver? Just write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And before we go uh, now out of the video, I tell you what those little things here are. They look a little bit like mandarins. But what they are are calamandinos, and calamandinos in the Latin word is citrus mandurensis. And this means it looks like a mandarin, but what it is, or ten tangerine, but what it is actually is, uh, yeah, if you try to eat it, it is uh, just like a lemon. So citrus fruit like a lemon. So it's very, very sour in this case. Uh, yeah. Uh, who, have, who had guessed this? Anyway, this is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.